Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. Our show this time takes us to UH Manoa, where Ocean Station Aloha was recently designated as a milestone in microbiology by the American Society for Microbiology. This is a great honor for the Center for Microbial Oceanography, Research and Education, Seymour, and its director, Dave Carl, and we are pleased and proud for their achievement and recognition. There were two events in the program. On the first day, Rita Caldwell delivered the inaugural Pavel Distinguished Lecture on Milestones in Microbiology at the East-West Center. On the second day, there was a ceremony at Seymour Halle, including the Ocean Station Aloha Milestones in Microbiology Science Symposium. In the way of background, the Pavel family gave $10 million to the university, the university set up an endowment going in large part to Seymour. Then Seymour set up an endowed professorship. Dave Carl, professor and director of Seymour and member of the National Academy of Sciences, was designated as the inaugural chair. He set up the Distinguished Lecture Series and invited Rita Caldwell, one of the leading scientists in the country, to give this inaugural talk. Caldwell is a distinguished professor at the University of Maryland at College Park, and at Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. She is Senior Advisor and Chairman Emeritus of Canon U.S. Life Sciences, Global Science Officer and Chairman of Cosmos ID, and past President of the American Society for Microbiology. She also served as the Director of the National Science Foundation. Her interests are focused on global infectious diseases, water, and public health. Caldwell's talk on the first day dealt with public health and the impacts of climate change, a scientific intersection of great importance to all tropical environments, especially islands and island nations and states, certainly including Hawaii. The event on the second day was about Ocean Station Aloha, an ocean research site established by Seymour in 1988. Ocean Station Aloha has been gathering data from the ocean at this designated site on monthly intervals since that time. ASM is the American Society for Microbiology. It's the largest life sciences society in the world. In its Milestones of Microbiology initiative, ASM recognizes places and people of historical significance to the field of microbiology. Indeed, this year Ocean Station Aloha was recognized as an ASM Milestone in Microbiology site for its historic and visionary contributions to science. An ASM delegation from Washington came to make the formal presentation. This is a huge honor and a big deal with global scientific implications, especially for a homegrown Hawaii-based research project. The event included a public seminar on the science being done at Station Aloha, followed by the unveiling of a plaque commemorating the site. Seymour will actually have two plaques, one to display in Holly Seymour on the Manoa campus and the other to be placed aboard the UH research vessel Kilo Moana, which makes monthly trips to Station Aloha. The seminar included discussions of the science of Ocean Station Aloha by scientists Dave Carl, Ed DeLong, and Matt Church, and discussions of ASM's Milestones in Microbiology program by Douglas Eboulé, chair of the program, and Tim Donahue, ASM's past president, followed by the unveiling of the commemorative plaque. I will be talking to you a little bit about the science of Station Aloha. Why did the American Society for Microbiology uh, uh, designate this site as a, a place of historic significance for the field of microbial science? Uh, so I will start off giving a, a few comments about the origin and maybe the vision, our planned vision for the Station Aloha program, the Hawaii Ocean Time Series program. And I will be followed by Ed DeLong, who will talk briefly about some of the exciting discoveries that have been made there over the past few decades. And Matt Church will then uh, talk about uh, biogeochemistry and uh, functional uh, gene surveys and much more, uh, things that he and his colleagues have been doing uh, for the last several years, if not uh, decades, at Station Aloha. So in closing, I wanted to leave a quote from um, a person you may know who happens to be sitting here in the audience. This was taken when she was the director of the National Science Foundation at their 50th anniversary, uh, and they had a big symposium on ocean discovery. Ocean science can no longer be viewed as an esoteric 
offshore discipline, its mainland and mainstream, the health and bounty of our oceans are issues of planetary survival. And these are the three programs that currently enjoy uh, research at Station Aloha, the HOT program, Hawaii Ocean Time Series, established 88, the Seymour program, established on the shoulders of Station Aloha, established in 2006, and this brand new program, the Simons Collaboration on Ocean Processes and Ecology, established just last year. Since the establishment of Station Aloha, there's been, as Dave mentioned, new methods developed, new microorganisms and microbial groups discovered, new genes and metabolic pathways, biogeochemical cycles, and ecological paradigms that have developed. And it, that is a challenge for a time series, but it's also critically important because you, we really need to, to make new instruments and develop new methods to measure new things. And that really goes hand in hand with the time series efforts that are, uh, have been ongoing here for uh, well over 25 years. I also, at the beginning here, want to um, put out an apology. There's no way I could cover all the fantastic science that's been done at Station Aloha over the past years. And so my account here is going to be admittedly a little bit autobiographical um, so I can stay within the time length. And, and um, that's not to mean there hasn't been lots of other good science, because uh, there has been. And when I tried to stick it all in, I was at 200 minutes instead of 20. So we'll, I'll stick with examples. Now, this is an odd slide to put in here. Uh, um, we hear a lot about the human microbiome and metagenomic, metagenomics that's used to look at the collective genomes of microorganisms that occupy us, because we're an ecosystem. Um, but what I'm going to tell you, what I'll argue here right now, is that a lot of the methods that were developed and, and the sort of uh, concepts for trying to understand these collections of microorganisms actually were developed by folks working in the ocean, including people here at Station Aloha. So thanks to Dave's leadership, um, this has happened here at Station Aloha studying the, the carbon cycle and, and other uh, aspects of, of the planet. And, and really, over the years, I think one can make the argument that lots of this has developed and been ongoing over the years, uh, lots more than I could even begin to tell you about. Uh, the complexity of ecosystem dynamics in a system that we probably would have thought when the program first started, when the HOT first started, uh, as a re it's a relatively stable system. The complexity of the dynamics that we've learned about this system really demands multidisciplinary and sustained observations. And although Station Aloha has become arguably the best studied oceanic habitat in the world, I would argue there are still a lot of mysteries we're uncovering all the time. Every cruise, there's something new emerging from the observations. And so this is, a, I think, a real opportunity for those of us that are still starting our careers. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a greenhouse gas. It traps heat from the sun and makes our planet warmer, which can be a good thing. But for the past 150 years, human civilization has been pumping out more CO2 than our planet can handle, and it's leading to significant changes in Earth's climate. What we didn't know at the time was that the most abundant photosynthetic organism on Earth isn't a plant that lives on land, but is a tiny microorganism called Prochlorococcus that lives in the ocean. Microbes such as Prochlorococcus are a type of phytoplankton and are responsible for nearly one half of the photosynthesis on Earth. In doing so, they affect the Earth's climate and keep our planet habitable. So think about this for a second. Tiny microorganisms that you can't see that live in a place where you can't breathe are actually responsible for every other breath you and I take. The impacts that microorganisms have in the sea were in part discovered through the efforts of the University of Hawaii's Hawaii Ocean Time Series program, or HOT. With oceans covering more than 70% of our planet, marine ecosystems are an integral component of Earth's climate. This is why understanding how climate change will alter the ocean is critical. As carbon dioxide is released into our atmosphere, the oceans become more acidic. The HOT program has one of the longest continuous records of oceanic CO2 in the world. Making the ocean more acidic will certainly affect many ocean species, such as coral reefs. But what will happen to the oxygen-producing microbes that we depend on so greatly? Will they adapt and survive? Future generations of scientists will undoubtedly need to continue to study the relationship between the marine environment, the health of our planet, and the effects of our changing climate. We have a book collection, see nearly 10,000 volumes, photographs galore, records of the society, and it says SAB and ASM. Now, SAB means Society of American Bacteriology, and that was the, that was the original name of the society. Then later, they found out there were viruses and fungi, so they made it the American Society of Microbiology. 
As ASM past president, it's my pleasure to be here today and designate Station Aloha as a Milestones in Microbiology site. Milestone sites are those that go beyond the norm because there's a lot of places around the country and the world that aren't listed on Doug's slides. Uh, we feel they should uh, set scientific paradigms and have a lasting effect on science. They should open new areas for investigation and devise approaches to open up new fields of scientific inquiry. They should produce scientific content concepts that stand the test of time, and they should have a broad and positive impact on science, education, and society. In sum, I hope I have illustrated how and why AM feels, ASM feels that Aloha, its scientists, students, and staff, and programs are models for research, education, and outreach in the ever-growing field of microbial sciences. In recognition of their accomplishments and in anticipation of new ones starting tomorrow, you can take the night off, <laughs> uh, the ASM is pleased to designate Ocean Station Aloha as a microbiome, uh, as a milestones in microbiology site today, November 17th, 2015. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Ocean Station Aloha, a long-term oligotrophic habitat assessment, the microbiological research site 100 kilometers north of Oahu, Hawaii, has played a fundamental role in defining the discipline of microbial oceanography, developing a comprehensive understanding of the sea, and educating the public about the critical role of marine microbes in global ecosystems. Welcome to Seymour Holly. We're, we're here in the lobby of the Holly, and we've just completed a, a wonderful celebration of uh, Ocean Station Aloha. We're in the American Society for Microbiology, the largest life sciences society in the world with over 60,000 members, has uh, uh, given us this award for uh, the contributions that we have made at Ocean Station Aloha in the area of microbial oceanography, the science of microorganisms. And uh, they've, they've given us this incredible plaque, which we can go take a look at in a minute. Uh, this plaque uh, commemorates the work that we've been doing since 1988 at the site. Uh, this is an ongoing project, so um, I hope to have my ashes spread there someday in the future, uh, and I hope that my students will continue this work for another uh, many, many decades to come. Uh, this ship behind me, is this is a, a model of the Kilo Moana, which is the ship operated by the University of Hawaii and owned by the U.S. Navy. It was purpose-built for oceanography and purpose-built for work in the North Pacific Gyre. Uh, this ship has a very unusual design with, which makes it very stable uh, in the heavy seas around Hawaii. And we've been using this ship for about the last 15 years uh, since it was constructed. And uh, this plaque tells about some of the reasons why we received this uh, certificate and actually this honor. Uh, we've made major contributions, fundamental contributions, I would like to think, about uh, the way microorganisms in the sea are structured and how they function. Uh, we've discovered new microorganisms, new metabolic activities. Uh, we've trained the next generation of leaders. And I think it's, it's said uh, in the final phrasing of this plaque, it says, in recognition of historic and visionary accomplishments. So. Our accomplishments are not only in the past, the historic accomplishments that we've done, but also in the future, the, what we hope are the, the vision uh, for continued work at Station Aloha. I thought the program today was excellent because it, um, it really honored uh, all the people here at Station Aloha that have been working so hard, and uh, particularly Dave Carl, and also um, you know, the importance of uh, education, science education, uh, study of the environment and kind of combining all these different disciplines in new ways because um, to understand our changing planet and the complexities of the world around us we can't uh, do it in academic silos we have to work together and I agree with what Tim Donahue said that if there's anything that uh, you can see in terms of the work at Station Aloha it's groups of really different people with different perspectives uh, working together to kind of make the 
the, the whole more than just the sum of the parts. And so we're all tremendously excited and honored. It was fabulous. Uh, the science is absolutely the very best. The, the discoveries that are being made here are really very important globally. And I think uh, the finding of the uh, Keeling curve um, to be reproducing it um, again with the research that's being done. It, on the one hand, it's scary because it really tells us that we have to worry about it. On the other hand, uh, it's fundamental science that's the very best that's being done. I think that the team here has done something very special. In the 27 years that they've been doing this research, they now have the first class, global first class laboratory to do oceanographic uh, research, especially at the microbial level, because it turns out that the bacteria, fungus, viruses, parasites, really drive all of living things. They drive nature. And they're, they're finding this in the ocean, which means it's a, one of the most fundamental processes um, globally. So, so it's very exciting. And they're doing it very accurately. Um, for me, being able to see this over the past 50 years, if I may put it that way, which is true, kind of scary when I think about it, where we have come in that time is, is really astounding. To, to being able just to see the microorganisms and now to be able to see how they work together and how they are made themselves, you know, how the, the components, uh, the nucleic acids tell us so much. The history of life is written in the nucleic acids. I just wish that I were 15 so I could start over again and work here. That's what I would like to do. I thought today's event was fantastic. It really shows how uh, bringing teams of people together from different disciplines and from other institutions to address large-scale global problems has benefits uh, in terms of uh, letting us understand the contributions of microbes to uh, climate change, to ocean ecosystems, and, and to let us understand how precious the time is that we have to uh, begin to address the changes that are happening if we want to pass a planet on to our children and grandchildren that is similar to the one that we inherited when we were born. And I think we will look back 10, 15, 20 years from now and realize that the kinds of things that are being done in, in Aloha are really uh, game-changing and that we were at an inflection point today where we can really see the, the principles that are going to come out of this research and the changes that we will hopefully be able to monitor uh, and, 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 and predict will really help us have a, a, a new view of how the oceans contribute to our day-to-day -day life and how we can use that information to better the planet and its inhabitants moving forward. Things are moving much faster now than uh, we ever thought they would when I was a young graduate student or when I was a, started as a faculty member 30 years ago. Uh, and we can really go in and interrogate what's going on, figure out uh, what activities are stable, what activities are beneficial, what activities represent uh, uh, things that are a problem for, for the oceans and for the globe in general. And, and just like this was a Defense Department conversation, we can try to figure out how to enhance the activities of the good guys and uh, mitigate or control the activities that are unwanted so that we can have an ecosystem that is more stable, more receptive to the types of things that we need in order to remain on this planet. As a young man, I grew up on the ocean. I didn't grow up to be an oceanographer, but I basically cleaned the beaches in New York City every day <laughs> in high school and in college. And I could see that the human activity from just recreation on the beaches was having a large impact on the water, the oceans. I used to fish all the time, the fish weren't there. So I didn't understand it, but, but I could see it. And I think the kind of work that's going on here is really getting at the root causes of, of the good activities that we want to enhance, the activities that we want to stabilize, and the activities that we want to prevent if we want 
a planet that's similar to the one that we see today. The next big things coming out of Seymour really have to do with the connection between Seymour and the SCOPE program that we talked a little bit about today, yeah. the Simons Collaboration yeah. on Ocean Processes and Ecology. And, and um, the intersection of both of those programs, I think, um, really driving forward uh, integration of genomics, which is some of the stuff that Ed DeLong talked about today a little bit, but integration of genomics with um, with the biogeochemistry that the HOT program has been providing over the last. There were people um, from, really from all different walks of life, if you will. We had people that are involved in work at Station Aloha, including a lot of the staff, the postdocs, the graduate students, and the scientists that are working at Station Aloha here at the University of Hawaii, but also, um, as you know, a lot of people from the ASM delegation from the yes. uh, American Society for Microbiology, uh, and um, we had uh, representation in the University of Hawaii uh, Administration and the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology Administration. Overall, when I looked out at the audience, there were a lot of people working at Station Aloha, which is great. The speakers were impressive, the crowd came from all over the scientific world, and the recognition was an enormous achievement for Ocean Station Aloha and for Seymour. Yes, this is a big deal. Huge kudos go to Dave Carl and those who have worked and collaborated with him at Seymour and the School of Ocean and Earth Science at UH Manoa. This event is another example showing the progress and prominence of UH Manoa in ocean and earth science and microbial oceanography. We should all be proud. Yes, the world is beating a path to our door. We should know that and we should aspire to even higher levels of scientific achievement in the years to come. If you'd like to know more about Seymour and Ocean Station Aloha, visit seymour.soes.hawaii.edu. If you'd like to know more about ASM, visit asm.org. If you'd like to study microbial oceanography, look at those sites all the more carefully. This is a great time, as they say, to get on board, right here in Hawaii. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from noon to 5 p.m. on weekday afternoons, and then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any show, they're all archived on demand on YouTube. Visit thinktechhawaii.com, our brand new and more powerful website, for our weekly calendar and our live stream and YouTube links, or Better yet, to sign on to our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a great new green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. We invite you to come down, see our studio, be part of our live audience. Contact me, Jay, at thinktechhawaii.com. Be a part of our civic engagement on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We want to know what you're thinking and how you feel about current issues and events affecting Hawaii. We want you to stay in touch with us, and we want to stay in touch with you. Let's think together.
On Thursday, January 21st, ThinkTech will join with the Anthology Marketing Group to present a program called Jobs in Hawaii, Working for a Better Future, at the Anthology Theater in Bishop Square. The program will cover the state of jobs and meaningful careers for the youth of our state, whether the job market is adequate for our workforce and sufficient for the economy we'd like to have, and what our governor, legislature, and private sector can do to provide better jobs and careers to keep our young people here. Join us and raise your awareness about the critical issues and changes affecting and taking place in Hawaii. Be a part of the conversation. Sign up to attend on thinktechhawaii.com. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Duke, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duke does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a volunteer, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. Oh, oh.